Welcome to the 2023 Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, filmed on location at the IGFA and brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. You're about to learn from teams of some of the top saltwater fishing pros and how you really glean the most from the Saltwater Sportsman Seminar Series is listen for the little subtleties, the small things that we are doing to put together a great catch or to get a few fish when times are tough out there. So let's get right down to it and start off the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. Coming to you from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, it's the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Get ready, everybody. Here's George Poveromo. Welcome to the Saltwater Sports for National Seminar Series, filmed on location at the IGFA, brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Trolling for yellowfin tuna, an A-team offshore panel here, Harry Vernon III, who does a lot of the tuna trolling in the Bahamas, as I do, New Jersey's own Captain Tom Daffin, uh, inshore as well as offshore canyon tuna fishing specialist. And we have Matt Upton with Ross Fishing Forecast Analyses. And let's get into the how-tos of trolling for tuna. There are a number of ways you can get the tunas from live baiting to chunking, but let's focus on the troll. And as I like to do in a lot of these sessions is start off with trying to locate them, because that, that, that's the, really a major part of the game. If you could get in a zone where they're likely to be, your odds go up in catching them. So, uh, Matt, I'm gonna start off with you, okay? Harry Vernon, myself. When we wanna do yellow fins, we go into Northwest Providence Channel in the Bahamas and search for them. There's these canyon-like bottom structures, really ragged bottom, that we'll go out and search, look for the birds. Given the influence of eddies and currents and uh you're looking into the channel itself northwest providence channel yep. what really influences the moving water or what should people maybe focus more on in that channel that help them locate yellowfins well the, right off the bat you're looking for what's the fish looking for food where's the food at where's the highest probability that bait fish will be uh to bring in your larger pelagic fish so what you're looking for is um, sea surface temperature fronts, um, ocean color changes. You're looking for currents, um, where the eddy, there's a natural clockwise rotation, or sorry, counterclockwise rotation eddy in the Northwest in the, um, Province Channel. So where, where is that eddy located? It shifts back and forth. Where's that eddy pushing over some good structure like you're talking about? And, you know, you want to, in order to use the techniques you guys are going to talk about, you got to know where the best location is. And that's where, usually where the currents are pushing over um, good structure, pushing over the ledges. It's going to be better than when it's pulling off. Exactly. And you go back to the chlorophyll, the plankton boundaries, which is a big plus in there, too, because they're in there to feed. They're eating on flyers and that. You know, it's like he says, wherever the bait's going to be, that's where... They're looking for bait just like anything else. I mean, your birds and all that stuff like that you're looking for. Uh, sometimes you'll have to go way east out of the Providence Channels. There's just so many areas that they can go and, and spread out to because it's, it's a big, it's an open space. So they're, they're going to move around. They're going to keep going around in that area. And I, I, I don't think, I think they're there year round and they just, like he says, counterclockwise, I think they, they work those areas. Well, you remember Pete Rose, not the baseball player, right? but the yes. Bahami Pete Rose yeah, yeah, who yeah. made a living with the hand lining for the yellowfins in that channel. Yeah. And I fished with him a time or two. He was a regular in our seminar series. Yep. And he said those yellowfins show up in the channel. He said they're there like year round, but they start coming in really strong in March. And he says, most people think that that game is over come June or July. Right. He says, but they run in there. And he said, he's had some of his best days in September, as long as these fronts don't start interfering. And what he believes that these bodies of yellow fins just make one gigantic circle around through these Bahamas and eventually come up back in, into these zones there. All right, let's go back up. We're gonna take a trip to uh, the Northeast, uh, Tom. And what are your right conditions for trolling for yellow fins? And, you know, Canyon related there too. Uh, uh, we talked about that a little bit earlier, but when we get back from the break, if you could help boil it in more, what are the right conditions based on the eddies and the canyons that's going to say this is going to be a good time or a good area to, to drop and catch elephants on a troll? And we're going to find that answer after this commercial break. 
We'll see you in a few right after the Saltwater Sports and National Seminar Series. Pay some bills, run some uh, sponsors, commercials. We're coming right back. Don't leave. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series is brought to you by Simrad. Go with Simrad and go with confidence. Penn, let the battle begin. Roffs, comprehensive oceanographic analysis for fishing. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. Angle, portable fridge freezers and high performance coolers. George will be right back. Welcome back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Let's get right back to George. Welcome back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. Filmed at the IGFA, presented by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Trolling for yellowfins. I'm talking with Captain Tom Daffin from the Northeast. And you're fishing out of Jersey when you're getting set to get on the troll. And I'll ask you this first, too, because you do a lot of the chunking and all that. The trolling for yellowfins up in your way in the north, when has it become more beneficial? Is it early in the season when the fish are more scattered or is when they're solid? What dictates the better trolling scenario? So we start our season off usually around June 1st. And with the cooler waters and the thermal climb being very high in the water column. Now, how would you define high? How, how uh, roughly? Like a, a shallow thermal climb for us is 50, 60, 70 foot down. Uh, you can still catch them when it hits like 100 foot, but when it starts getting down around to 120 to 150 foot down, that's when the chunking starts to take place more so. And when we're also inshore fishing, when I mean inshore, yeah. 20, 30 fabs, that's where we can chunk the fish at more effectively. But in the beginning part of the season with the shallow thermocline, and we're also trying to keep up with fast moving water because the water moves a little bit faster in the springtime than it does in the summertime, like say July or August. Uh, we, we take a look at, you know, the Roth's charts, we take a look at the temperatures, the chlorophyll, and how it all relates to the surrounding structure. Once we feel comfortable with that, where the fish should be at, then we have to decide whether we're fishing on cold sides that it breaks, warm sides that it breaks, where, and honestly, 95% of the people, they're headed right for the hot water. I'm a cold water guy. I fish the cold sides of the breaks. Like, we started off around the June 1st this year, we had around an eight degree break it went from 60 to 68. Our best bites were in 60 to 61 degree water on yellow fins, surprisingly enough. Where 68 is a very optimal temperature, those fish were definitely on the cold side of the break. If I remember correctly, when we did that show, we were trolling them and it was dirtier water. Absolutely, we fished the cold side, the, the break, the hot side was on the west side of that canyon that day, and we caught our fish on the east side. If I had my druthers, I always start on the cold side of the break. Yeah. Unless somebody's telling me we're roping them, Yeah. I'm fishing on a cold side of break. Matt, you're going to add something to I'm going to say that I, talking to many anglers up north especially, that natural habitat for the tunas, it may be too cold for them, but they're going in there because that's where the bait is. That's where the, they're going in there to feed during the day, and then they'll move off maybe offshore to their natural warmer habitat um, during the nighttime. Interesting. And Tom, you were talking about some of the dynamics, the cooler water, the warmer water, and, and how it relates up to a zone. Give me what you would paint as the perfect example of what an eddy's doing, where it's over, and what makes the perfect eddy for you? So if we have a, a small eddy that's centered up on any, any county, it doesn't matter whether it's the Hudson, or Linicole, Wilmington, Washington, it doesn't matter. All right. And I'm not into the so much which way it's rotating, whether we have a counterclockwise, clockwise rotation to it. If it's slot, more times than not, it's sliding down the shelf towards the southwest, okay? I always set up so I can fish the northern edge of that. And the reason being is I feel as though these tunas are kind of like a little on the lazy side when it comes to trying to push with the water. All right, I think they're on the trailing edge of it a lot of times, near the break. They don't have to be on the break, but they have to be near the break. And wherever that correlates in with really good structure, the 100 fathom curve or some structure that's up on the flats or even deeper structure in 150, 200 fathoms, that's where I would be targeting at. And uh, your fish finder, uh, when you're in those zones, are you marking any bait or is it just mainly fishing temperature breaks? No, I, I, I work the structure and then if I find a bait and I find out 
where what water depths they're in like those fish might be the bait might be up just up on the flat 50 60 fathom or it might be just off the bank down at 150 fathoms that's where i'm going to start looking at the hardest i'm going to start grinding on that area very good when we come back from the commercial break we'll start talking about the tactics which really vary greatly between what you're pulling up there in a thousand rods and the four or five rods that harry vernon and i normally do down south you'll learn all that and more when we come back after a few commercials, you're watching the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series is brought to you by Rapala, your best shot at a world record. Suffix, always use the best line. VMC, your expert in hooks. Williamson Lures for the Pelagic Playground. Starbright, blending technology with performance since 1973. George will be right back. Welcome back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Let's get right back to George. Welcome back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. We're at the IGFA with a hot team of offshore anglers. The talk is trolling for yellowfin tuna. Is it the old adage that the more commotion you get behind the boat, the more fish you raise versus what we do down south where we put five out uh two flats two riggers and maybe a center and we think that's really loading up tell me your theory about the majority of the baits or lures that you're fishing to spread and so there's a twofold reason why we fish as many rods as we do number one i'm big into noise makers all right i pull a lot of splash bars spreader bars and that that's is what frames our pattern and we fish ballyhoos a little bit to the inside a little bit to the outside smaller single baits and one of the big reasons is that we fish so many splash bars and and spreader bars and all we want to make a little bit of a ruckus back here and we if you happen to notice when we were fishing we keep them fairly tight yeah, together absolutely. sure you know to try to make as much noise in a small area the other reason we fish so many rods is we want to take advantage of a bite when it comes on. When those fish come up, and I've been saying it for 30 years that, you know, if you get a pile on of, let's say, like three fish, they're the three most aggressive fish in that pot. There might be 50 fish back there behind you. All right. So you want to try to put a bait in front of as many aggressive fish as you can. And when you get that big pod to come up behind a boat, finally, you could be trolling around for a couple hours, not going to play. And when you finally get that pod to come up, you want to hook as many fish as possible. Don't worry if there's only two of us, three of us fishing. It don't matter if all 11 rods go down. We'll worry about that later. Good problem. Yeah, it's good problem. problem. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great problem. It sounds problem. like you're a graduate from the Harry Vernon School of Fishing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> What's your thought when people line their baits up? You have some that like to stagger every single bait in the spread, others that want to keep them on the same parallel. So if you had, say, for example, close flat lines, they're riding the same distance back. The next set, same distance back. What, what's your take staggering the bait spread versus trying to keep them on the same parallel? So I like keeping them on the same parallel. Oh, and why is that? Reason being is because every boat fishes a little bit differently, okay? Every boat has its certain little blue holes in their wake back there, especially when it comes to flat lines or center lines, all right? Um, what I do is I'll fish two valleys on my flat lines and a splash bar right in the middle, a little bit shorter, and I set that splash bar just so I think the fish can see that trailing bait. But the baits just behind it, they're actually, if you watch it, on the video, which is going to be coming up, that you, the bait is actually in a blue hole that the wake is causing. Right. All right. Yeah. And the same thing has to do with your short riggers because they're pretty tight on my boat. And I keep everything kind of compact with that. Harry, going arc trolling down there for, for the elephants, sometimes we do do it in a channel. And you see the spreader bar fishery that they use up there. Could spreader bars be adapted to? trolling for yellow fins in the channel? Is it, it something it, new? Would it 100%, work? 100%. For sure they would work. It, it just, we're so fortunate that we get, we get so much live bait that we don't do a lot of the trolling. Uh, if we don't get the bait, then we, we will troll. We'll do the daisy chain. So I'll, I'll put those out. It, it's splashing, like, like you said, make a lot of commotion. But our fish that we catch aren't really gigantic big fish, but when you got them open, there's small baits inside. Mm -hmm. So I love using small feathers, you know, baits like that, so stuff that's just below the surface or a couple of chuggers. So I, we, we mix it up, but I love, my center line is gonna be a big daisy chain with a big splashing lure behind that. 
Gotcha. And we're going to get into uh, how to uh, uh, set up your spread. I'll throw in, uh, you know, my two cents worth as well. Yep. Once we come back from the commercial break, we'll be back after a few commercials. You're watching the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. We're coming right back. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series is brought to you by Atlas Tracks, satellite tracking of recreational pleasure boats, supply vessels, and fishing fleets. Columbia Sportswear, stay cool and protected while fishing. JL Audio, ahead of the curve. ACR, building survival products since 1956. Florida Keys and Key West, visit FLAKeys.com. George will be right back. Welcome back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Let's get right back to George. Welcome back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. You're going to lay out some trolling baits behind your boat. I'm going to put my two flat lines straight behind the boat directly. And, there's, Rough, and they'll be small. how far back? I'd say probably about 40 yards behind the boat. And Not what are back. they, generally speaking? They're small rocket head. Small rocket head style lures. Pound test and, and if I, I may put a rocket head and then a little small... Uh, Molecraft chugger on the other side. I'm using 40 pound test leader mm -hmm. on, on the troll. Now, then I'll put on the outside on the riggers, I'll, I'll put my skipping ballyhoo or a chugging ballyhoo. I'll do, I always do one plain naked ballyhoo. Always just have one out there, just skipping along. And then I'll put a chugger on the other side. There's a couple of chuggers that I really like that, that work really well. And then I'm going to have my straight back on my, my bigger rod because I just feel it. When, when we're trolling, that real big one with all that commotion, with, and it's a bigger bait, that, that's where I'm going to get the bigger fish, hopefully, if I can get them on but the other the most commotion behind the spreads, what you're saying. Behind all the other baits, sure. yes. Okay. And it's and a simple spread. It's easy to, to work with and you know manage with, with the crew that I fish with, so <laughs> it, it makes it pretty pretty easy. And you play around with trolling speeds, too? Trolling speed. Well, you, want, always, you always want your baits to look natural yeah. out there. You don't, want, you don't want to be moving fast and your ballyhoos are just flopping all over itself and, and just not doing it right. You want them skipping mm -hmm. and making commotion, but not where they're going to tangle on itself and make a mess. Now, when you have that bait that's way back there, uh, what's good about the daisy chain is just, it's a lot of bait, a lot of uh, squids, and it keeps it up pretty high. So it, you can go the same speed. Now, if you have to adjust your bait by bringing them in a little closer or, or a little further back, like you three or you three or four baits might be working great, but this one over here is not. So you either bring it up or let it back a little further. You could adjust it with your speed, but then you got to adjust all the other baits. All right. What about the swimming plugs, the, the Rapala CD18s or the, the 40s that they make, the 30s? And again, with swimming plugs, best on a, uh, a bent butt rod that cut yeah, down that down, attitude well, down you there? Want, you want it down. You're, you're going deep for a reason. So if you can put it on a, on a curb butt rod, to get it down below all your everything else that you have out there, oh, definitely. There's, there's a lot of fish. Are, your bigger fish are deep. I've just from the live baiting for years, we we've dove in the water and seen the bigger fish all down below, just waiting for whatever the the commotion that they where they can come up and it, it, and going way back in the Gulf, a lot of those yellowfin tuna. It, it, back then, they were taken on those swimming plugs. Oh yeah, and, big time. And I would run them flat off the flat lines, and then from there, work the outriggers and the center rigger, and usually just going with plain ballyhoo. And again, more of either a small, medium size, what have you, to try to scale it down to what yep. these fish are eating, and just trying to play off the edges or wherever the zones are. And again, late afternoon, uh, when you start seeing the birds get more active and you troll, but what about, now, when you see them late afternoon, is that more dictated by time of the year and moon have you been out there where you've seen these fish 11 or at noon time i've crushed them in the right. middle of the day so absolutely right. crushed them in the middle of the day you know and we got out there early we're looking for the birds we're trying to find what's what's good nothing nothing and all of a sudden in the middle of the day we just just came across the birds and the bait everything's up and just killed them and then we've had it the, the opposite way normally your your evening bite is real real good and you'll catch them into the dark so it just you know, you're not going to catch them not being out good there. Good thing of being line. out there, you could run into a dolphin. You might get a shot well, of a blue, and you might even get the elephants. We've, we've caught blue. We've caught, yeah. caught them all. And Matt, you're hearing us talk about the yeah. tactics. So anything that you want to add? I'm learning stuff as we, as you guys are talking. <laughs> <laughs> anything you want to feed us on? Uh, well, the us only thing I'm going to mention is, you know, during the summertime up north and and down south, uh, the sea surface temperature doesn't quite become as important, and you can't see the frontal boundaries as well with sea surface temperature. Um, is the ocean color. 
So even though the ocean color breaks may not be um, that prevalent, it's an indication of different water masses, right? And these different water masses that we track can be um, individual habitats. If that bait is in there, we can follow that piece of water and it just gives you a better indication on where, where to go fish. Now, with the 30 seconds we have left, if you had to give us three key tips. You have to keep an eye on what, what the temperature is while you're trolling, all right? You always gotta keep mind of your uh, fathometer. And the, one of the biggest things is uh, do not worry about fishing one area. There's times when I'll fish three different, I will literally troll through three different canyons. It's okay the to straight transfer. line. <laughs> it's okay to straight line troll going Absolutely. through things. There's a lot of fish in between the canyons as hundred well. percent. And we're out of time with our yellowfin tuna trolling session. I want to thank Matt Upton, Captain Tom Daffin, Harry Vernon III for that session. And we'll be right back with a new topic with the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. There you have it. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series will be right back next week with a totally different episode. If you want a chance to win our super grand prize Mako 17 Pro Skiff Center console, powered by Mercury Outboard, Enter the drawing at nationalseminarseries.com. One lucky winner will take home this beautiful Mako boat. Best of luck.